Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. God is great. All the time, all the time, God is great. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Cindy Stewart, and we are so glad that you could join us for worship today. Some of you will be watching this live. Others of you will be catching this later, but you are welcome. Hear these words from Psalm 105. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Glory in God's holy name. Look to the Lord's strength and seek God's face always. Praise the Lord. And uh, this summer we have been enjoying the surprise sack. And so I brought a few things today. So I have a nickname around the church office and the nickname has something to do with this. So what do I have here? Let's see, this is kind of one of those bag inserts, okay? This is the, this is the small uh, travel, this is the quick travel one. I have this one that is great for hiking or this is great for um, short trips when I need to have both hands free. And then this one is, this is bigger. You can see this, this is my, it's one of my shopping bags. So the nickname that I have around the office is the bag lady, right? Because I have so many bags, but each one has its unique purpose. Each one carries the things that I most need it to carry. Now, how does that relate to anything today? Well, today we're gonna hear the gospel passage from Luke chapter 10. And this is where Jesus is sending out 72 He's sending 72 out. They're, he's sending them out two by two. And he's sending them into the world. And he says, don't take a bag. Don't take a bag with you. Now, that would be crazy for me because I have so much stuff that I'm always carrying. He's reminding those disciples and followers that they're not supposed to take anything with them, right? They are supposed to trust and to rely on the generosity of the people they're serving, that they will provide food. They will provide the resources that they need. It's about trusting in God to care for each and every one of our needs. How easy is that? Is that easy? No, it's not easy at all. Uh, but we learn from this and we continue to grow and hear Jesus's words and remember always that it's not about us, is it? It's not about us, it's always about God. And it's about what God wants to do in our lives. So friends, Hear Jesus' words, and the next time you pick up one of your bags, think about what you're putting in it, and think about what's not in it that you may need to rely on God and Christ for. In that spirit, would you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, we have a lot of bags in our lives, and they carry important things. But God, when you invite us into mission and ministry, sometimes you invite us to leave things behind, to trust in you, and to trust in your ways. So God, guide us and lead us in your light and in love always. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. And friends, I invite you to hear these words of the gospel, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 17. Jesus sends out the 72. After the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go, he told them, the harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. And do, no, do not move around from house to house. And when you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your own town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. 
Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. May God add a blessing on the reading, hearing, and understanding of this holy word. Amen. So in our series on resilience, our title is Learning Your ABCs. So would you pray with me? Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So have you gotten some R&R lately? Now, for those who have forgotten, R&R is military slang for rest and recuperation. Yet other appropriate definitions include rest and relaxation, or rest and recreation, or even rest and rehabilitation. Again, have you gotten some R&R lately? Because one of the major casualties of the pandemic has been a lack of R&R for people, mostly due to the lack of travel and tourism. In fact, it has been estimated that the decline could be as much as $2.7 trillion thus far in 2020. Millions of jobs have been lost from airlines to hotel chains. Now, this year, we know that many individuals and families chose staycations and trips more locally focused rather than the typical vacations. We know that the, the value, though, of time away allows people to relax, refresh, and reset from their daily routines. Time away to visit family and friends in, in seasons of major life transitions like, like births, deaths, graduations, and other celebrations is important. We need to acknowledge then the impact of this pandemic hasn't just been on the economy. It has had a deep impact on mental health and well-being. If the pandemic continues to take away our time away and our and our possibilities, what is a healthy and faith-filled response for us? Last week, we started our new sermon series, Resilience, talking about how resilient are you? We have to acknowledge that there are many obstacles and challenges we face in our lives even when there is not a pandemic. So we need to embrace resilience, which is what helps us to bounce back and to thrive in the midst of trials. So today we're going to talk about learning our ABCs in terms of resilience. We're going to be inspired by our gospel passage and the sending forth of the 72. Now I want to ask you, when you are faced with a problem or challenge, are you ever surprised by how you react? The truth is that hindsight is 2020, and we can always think about what we could have or should have said or done differently. The reality is that we typically spend a lot of time going over and over in our minds such things. So how can we better listen to our thoughts? and understand how our thoughts affect our feelings and behavior. The A in resilience, in, in the resilience ABCs, is adversity. This could be called what pushes your buttons. Most of the time we realize we're able to successfully navigate the challenges and setbacks that we face in our lives. Yet as the authors of the resilience factor say, certain events, however, rob us of grace. The kinds of adversities that push our buttons are the ones that we need to focus upon. I want you to think about the following list of, of adversities. Maintaining balance between work and family. Juggling several tasks at once. <laughs> recovering from a difficult relationship. Dealing with people's anger and conflict. Losing a job. 
being diagnosed with a serious illness. Now, most days, we may not face any one of those things, and yet there are days when adversities seem to pile up and, and pile up and pile up on top of each other, right? So let's think about our gospel passage and, and what those followers of Christ experienced. As you can imagine, the number 72 is significant, and this most likely represents the 70 nations that are listed in Genesis 10. And remember that translated into Greek, it is 72. So Luke was already anticipating the mission to the nations that started on the day of Pentecost. This is a reminder of what Jesus intended for his followers. The reality is that the disciples and the followers of Christ experienced that the harvest was plentiful and the workers were few. The kingdom of God was at hand and the need to share this good news was important. And Jesus certainly didn't sugarcoat this. They were being sent like lambs among the wolves. This wasn't going to be a fun-filled vacation for the 72. They would be accepted in some places and rejected in others. Some would greet them warmly and others would ignore them. And these followers weren't supposed to take anything with them. They were going to be completely dependent upon the ones they were serving for food and shelter and other necessities. This was no cakewalk for them at all, yet they were learning about what it meant to be resilient in the face of trials. As we hear this today, I want you to think about the adversities that you may be facing right now. How are those things affecting your mental and emotional well-being? And how are those, those things affecting you spiritually in your relationship with God and Christ? Just naming these adversities and how they are affecting you will help you to develop resilience and allow you to focus on Christ's mission in spite of those adversities. Now the B in Resilience ABCs is Beliefs. The book calls these ticker tape beliefs because these are the thoughts that, that run through your mind that determine how you feel and what you do when you are facing adversities. Honestly, sometimes these beliefs and thoughts are even outside of your awareness. For many of us, though, the awareness of these thoughts helps us to tune into how we feel right there in the moment. While you and I do not have to tune in to every minute of every day, if we want to improve our resilience and thus our ability to respond to adversity, you and I need to listen to what we are saying to ourselves when it occurs. For the 72 followers of Christ, their understanding and beliefs about the Messiah and the kingdom of God were right there in front of them. What did they claim about the Messiah that propelled them into this mission. Certainly they believed in what Jesus said, yet what did they believe about the kingdom of God? And what about this kingdom gave them that sense of urgency that Jesus demanded? The good news of Jesus had spread through the area, and yet many did not believe or claim what Jesus had to say. If the people listened to the 72, they were listening to Jesus. There would be woes, did you hear that? Woes and judgment to those places and people that would reject the kingdom in Jesus' words. The 72 were learning lessons for their present time with Jesus as well as for their future. They were learning about what it would mean to be more resilient in their missional endeavors. Of course, this also challenges what you and I believe and claim about Jesus and the kingdom of God. We've learned about Jesus, and many of us have a personal relationship with Jesus. Yet, are we learning and growing into our discipleship? It's easy to say what we believe and claim about Jesus, but it's more difficult to be his disciples. So just as Jesus sent those 72 to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near, you and I need to claim this kingdom too. It is, it's deeper and it's wider than, than we could ever imagine. So, so what are we doing to help others to be welcomed into the family of God and to know God's love and grace and mercy? 
A reality for us to name is that it is much easier to share the good news when things are going well, and it's much more challenging when we are facing adversity, diversity and adversity. Thus, our, our own need for resilience. Now, the C in resilience, ABCs, is consequences, and specifically those consequences that are feelings and emotions. This is all about how you and I feel, as well as what you and I do in that moment of adversity or challenge. Resilient people are just more aware of their feelings and emotions. For instance, think about your reaction to a recent setback or challenge. Do you ever feel like you get in an, an emotional rut? That, that one particular emotion is more dominant than others? Maybe it's, it's anger, maybe it is frustration, maybe it is, I don't know, it's so many reactions, right? But, but listen to that, listen to that emotion and learn from it. This gives us an interesting perspective, certainly when it comes to our gospel passage. The 72 were sent out like sheep among the wolves. They were given specific instructions. And while it would seem that they would return heartbroken and discouraged, they certainly did not return with frustration, did they? The gospel reveals to us that these followers of Christ returned with what? Okay, go ahead, say it out loud. They returned with what? Joy. Joy. In their day, they didn't, they didn't have social media to promote the good news and to share their messages of faith, hope, and love with cute little memes. The witness and word of Jesus' teaching, preaching, and healing did go ahead of them and prepared the hearts and souls for what the 72 would share. Their joy was in the power of the Holy Spirit that was present with Christ. Now see how quickly we moved from adversities and challenges to joy? And remember that this wasn't the kind of worldly joy that we call happiness. This is a spiritual experience of joy that only Christ can bring. Those 72 followers of Christ experienced something very powerful in the, the mission and ministry in Christ's name. It transformed their lives, and after Christ's death and resurrection, it would transform the entire world. Our relationship with Christ certainly inspires our own sense of resilience. When we face adversities and challenges and trials, in Christ we are able to experience positive emotions like joy. The Philippians understood this by talking a lot about the great gift of joy in their lives and by repeating the Apostle Paul's words, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now, according to learning our ABCs of resilience, our adversities, our beliefs, and our consequences invite us to listen carefully to how we respond and how we feel in the midst of trials and challenges. Certainly, we are more resilient than we give ourselves credit for. Yet we can continue to become more resilient mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually. Think of it this way. The mission and ministry of Jesus Christ is counting on us to be our best selves so that we can share the best of Christ with others. If this is true, then we certainly need to remember to get as much as much R&R &R in our lives as we can, no matter how you define it. Rest and recuperation, rest and relaxation, rest and recreation, or even rest and rehabilitation. You and I need it for the spiritual tasks ahead of us as disciples of Jesus Christ. Interestingly enough, Clint and I are preparing for a few days away to move our youngest daughter to college this week out to western Nebraska. Even though we aren't leaving the state, I pray that this time is going to be filled with R&R &R, as well as some joy-filled surprises and blessings along the way. Of course, I'm going to be reflecting on our journey toward becoming more resilient and faith-filled in our response to all of life's challenges. And you know what? I certainly plan to return with joy. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, 
The sending forth of the 72 re reminds us of the importance of, of being in mission and ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. God, where you call us to go and to be, we want to follow. God, we know that you will provide exactly what we need. You will guide us and lead us in ways that will certainly be a blessing. Inspire us on this journey, God, and help us to know that joy that comes in following you. And we pray all of this in the name of Christ, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I hope you will continue to be in prayer for the mission and ministry of First United Methodist Church in Columbus, Nebraska. If you would like more information about our programs and ministries, I invite you to go to our website, www.columbusfumc.com. And would you receive our benediction? And here our quote, our resilience quote for the week. Resilience means you experience, you feel, you fail, you hurt, you fall, but you keep going. As we face adversities, may we remember the witness of the 72 and always return from our R&R &R, as well as our mission and ministry with joy. And the people of God said, Amen. <laughs>